Hello guys, it's Sino, and I've got one of many build videos for you today after the release of patch 2.4 uh, and we're going to get things started off with a Firebats build that makes use of the newly changed Legacy of Nightmare Rings. It's a strong build that's up there with a couple of other builds that I'll be making videos for this week. Uh, it has some advantages and some disadvantages, the advantages being that it's by far the tankiest of the top builds but relies on your gargantuan pet which uh, has a habit of dying very easily on the level 80 plus greater rifts. But it's been peaking for me at around 77, 78 with my low paragon levels um, and not much time to push. But uh, let's get into the build and we'll start with the gear that you'll be needing. So I'll show you two loadouts, one being the main meta for the build and a second being a slightly altered version which is what I use. So uh, the, the biggest thing you're going to notice with the LON rings is that it requires every single piece of uh, your gear to be ancient in order to be fully viable. Uh, and then of course you'll need those items to have the correct stat rolls in order for the build to be optimized for higher greater rifts. This build will be primarily focused around pets, so for that reason we need a Mask of Jerome. Next we want the new Aquila chest piece, which is one of the items that uh, is what makes the build so tanky. But you want to make sure that it rolls close to 90% as its main affix, but we'll get into the stats and, and everything else a little bit later on. Next we want a pair of Pox Folds, as you'll be spending large portions of time standing still in the middle of large groups of enemies. And this just helps you with um, stacking up the extra damage, um, followed by a pair of Illusionary Boots. Now. Most people use illusionary boots in this build because it allows you to run through enemies unhindered which is great for builds like this because you'll need to be stacking up large groups of enemies at a time which involves a lot of movement between packs. But there is a, another alternative to these boots which we'll also get into a little bit later on. You'll be needing a decent pair of Tasker and Theos which will be increasing the attack speed of our pets. This build will be making use of the Firebats ability so for that reason we're taking coils of the first spider bracers and the new mantle of channeling shoulder piece which will both allow us to be even tankier while channeling fire bats which is what will allow us to stand in the middle of absolute chaos when pulling huge rooms of enemies on top of us. Next you'll be needing a belt of transcendence for summoning our fetish minions which we need not only for DPS but for the CD reduction on our big bad voodoo which is why for our main weapon we will be wanting an SMK either equipped or in the cube. The other weapon which you will have either equipped or in the cube will be a sacred harvester so that we can keep 10 stacks of soul harvest up at all times. For our offhand it's pretty optional but for the current meta of this build this is what most people run with as it's great at mitigating those random sources of damage that can one shot you when you're not expecting it. However there are other options for this slot which I'll get into later. You will also be wanting a hellfire amulet for the extra passive which becomes pretty vital if you want any sort of consistency in the higher greater rifts. For your cube then, you will, as I said before, want either an SMK or Sacred Harvester, followed by the Lakumba's Ornament Bracers and the Short Man's Finger Ring, which is where our main source of damage will be coming from. Next, let's take a quick look at the ideal stats you'll have on your gear, but keep in mind this might change as the patch is new and we are still experimenting as we play, uh, but right now this is what you'll be looking for. So, on your helm, you'll want Intelligence, Vitality and Crit Chance. On your shoulders you will want intelligence, vitality, gargantuan damage and either area damage or armor. For your chest you want intelligence, vitality and gargantuan damage with 3 gem slots. For your legs you want intelligence, vitality, armor and 2 gem slots. For your waist you want intelligence, vitality, armor and the 4th slot is optional. For your boots you want intelligence, vitality, armor and resistances. For your gloves you'll be wanting a trifecta of crit chance, crit damage and attack speed which I will explain why in a minute. For your braces you will want cold damage, intellect and vitality. For your weapon you will ideally have a high damage roll, uh, a 10% damage roll and again attack speed. If you have to choose you might want to prioritize attack speed for reasons uh, I'll explain shortly. For your mojo you will want intelligence, vitality, crit chance and ideally you will have elite damage though cooldown reduction, area damage and gargantuan damage are all viable stats. For your rings you will want crit chance, crit damage and either intelligence or cold damage. Uh, the same for your amulet though you will want one of the relevant passives which we will get to shortly. For your legendary gems you will want Bane of the Trap, Bane of the Stricken and the Taeguk gem. Now the Taeguk gem is the reason why you are trying to stack attack speed on your gloves and your weapon because this will increase the rate in which you are able to stack the DPS and defensive increase from this gem which is very very important. You want to be able to generate these stacks as fast as possible whilst also maintaining them for as long as possible. Okay. For our abilities then we are running with Fire Bats, Cloud of Bats uh, and Big Bad Voodoo with Rain Dance. Rain Dance will allow us to keep ourselves above 90% mana while channeling our Fire Bats which will keep us in the safe zone with our defensive bonuses. If you're in an 80 plus Greater Rift and either fail to channel Fire Bats or be above 90% mana when you get hit you are likely to get one shotted so managing these two spells efficiently is vital to the build. 
Next is our main source of damage, which is the Gargantuan with Humongoid Rune. They will be putting out a huge amount of damage, but you need to keep an eye on their positioning, and sometimes it might be necessary to just recast them at your location. Next, you want Soul Harvest with the Languish Rune, as you'll not only be needing to keep up 10 stacks for the massive DPS and defensive increase, but you'll also receive a temporary armor boost every time you hit it. Next, part of the Mater staple for this build is most people are running with Piranado so that you can suck up all the enemies into one spot and have your Gargs unload on them, which be, uh, can be very effective, but I personally run with something a little bit different, which we'll get into in a moment. Finally, the staple for all Witch Doctor builds is Spirit Walk with Jaunt. Um, for the passives, you'll want Midnight Feast, Jungle Fortitude, Confidence Ritual, and Swampland Attunement. You will also want Spirit Vessel, which is what I have on my Hellfire Amulet at the moment. Okay, so that's the Mater version of the build, but now I'll tell you how I play it, which means changing a few things around. So, firstly, I'll replace Illusionary Boots with a pair of Ice Climbers. Uh, being able to run through enemies is great, but it doesn't cause me as many problems as freezing damage does, be it from the frozen affix or freezing pulse spells. These boots will allow me more freedom with my spirit walk and allow me to tank a lot of damage that I otherwise would have to avoid, causing me to break my Tagluk stacking. Speaking of which, another thing I change is Jaunt Severance. This is because your Tagluk stacks drop very, very quickly, and taking Severance will allow you to zip between mob packs very quickly, and that speed can mean a difference between keeping or losing your Tagluk stacks. Finally, but more significantly, I take a Eukapian Serpent and drop Piranado for Zombie Dogs with the Chill Rune. Uh, this not only allows uh, for much greater synergy between Midnight Feast, the Mask of Duram, Tasker and Theos, uh, and your Trap Gem, but it also provides way more consistency with your damage reduction. So, um, you know, so being able to mitigate the initial burst of damage from a mob is great and all, but it becomes completely useless during a prolonged encounter with an elite pack or a Rift Guardian. Um, the damage reduction from Eukapian Serpent has meant a difference between me being able to tank or getting one shot by a Rift Guardian. So for this reason, I much prefer this setup. But those are the builds, guys. Um, hopefully, I'll have at least two more builds coming out this week that are my variations of what is currently pushing top. Uh, so stay tuned for those. And if you like the videos, please give it a like and consider subscribing. If you haven't done so already for more Diablo content coming soon. Alright guys, take care. Until next time, peace.